Okay, good morning everyone and welcome to the Tuesday, September 17th uh, Working Group Component Standards Session. Uh, how's everyone doing today? Pretty, pretty solid morning. We did a release yesterday for Ignite. Nice. Uh, good, good. It's afternoon for me, but uh, it's all right. <laughs> Great, so um, we have kind of a small group this morning, but I still wanna take some time for this. Uh, Lee and I have been talking a little bit and we both kind of agree that it feels like it's been a slow few months. Um, so we wanted to kind of have a, a discussion. We'll probably continue this again next week uh, in case other people show up about like which sorts of things are challenging for people in open source, which things might be blocking work. Uh, we've seen a lot of really good ideas come through working group and people have written some very interesting caps and like uh, that's gotten some review and some discussion in open source but it seems like a lot of things are stalling lately so we just kind of wanted to open a floor for people to talk about what they feel is difficult or what they feel they're being blocked on and see if we can find ways to ease that friction So I don't know if anyone here has thoughts on that. Mm, maybe I can start. Well, I, for myself, I don't know. I haven't been uh, with the working group um, for too long. Um, and, uh, but so far it's been quite good. I mean, uh, thanks uh, a lot to Lee, who's uh, taken out quite a bit amount of time to uh, go through some issues with me. That was really helpful. Um, I think in general, it's, I think Lee, you mentioned it um, last conversation is it's, I think people can find it a bit difficult to work on these issues, at least like from my point of view, looking through all these serializer stuff, it can be quite daunting. And there's a lot of like, I don't know, a lot of abstractions and sometimes duplications where it's not quite clear, like why is this used there? Why is this used there? Um, I think it's it's also part of, of our job, I guess, to um, better that on that front. Um, but I mean, like, as far as working with the working group goes, um, I only have good things to tell. I don't know. I'm, it's, it's, it's challenging for sure, especially for someone who hasn't really worked on this before. But um, I feel it's, it's a lot of fun for me, at least. Um, I have to dig into these issues, but I can feel I'm making some progress at least, or at least I'm learning stuff and I know which points to tackle next. So yeah, for me, it's quite good actually. Okay, well that's good. Um, do you feel like you know the people you need to reach out to for things and you know how to get in contact with them and, and make sure that you know, your issues are being addressed? Like I know a lot of times in open source, the way to get things done is not necessarily to just comment on a github pr or an issue and if you didn't see it like you kind of have to actively chase people down so i want to make sure people know um how to do that or know who to talk to um i mean for my work since i haven't really done much as of yet um haven't had much issues at least in this working group i had some in the past while i was trying to get some traction with like other six um, this could be quite challenging. Um, I mean, at the moment, I I don't see it, but I can see why why people would say that or why why people would have this problem. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And just you know, so just since we're on video, I do want to say for anyone watching this, if you feel like you're having trouble chasing the right people down or knowing who they are, please just ping me on Slack, M Toffin, and I'll help you find the right person. Something I think uh, is very worth pointing out is uh, over the past few releases, we've received a, a lot of discussion and criticism of the project from like core maintainers um, and then users about the prioritization of features and graduation of features uh, with very, really little work on stability, refactoring, and basically everything that this working group is concerned with. Um, and 
a lot of that in from what I see is people are incentivized right uh, by by monetary goals right and so people who are paid to work on the project work for companies who get ultimately incentivized by their clients or you know by their product development to merge features that are in line with something that can enable them to have some kind of differentiator in the field so that they can use kubernetes to sell stuff right mm -hmm. and um and stability isn't sexy uh, or cheap that's true it's definitely true yeah and it's tough to get people to work on things and get a lot of people to work on things and like do all that legwork to drive progress if they're not being paid right um, even even for me, right? Like I, I um, I'm not paid to work on the stuff that this working group works on anymore. It hasn't been that way for at least probably a year. Um, so like all the code I've written for this working group is been my free time. But it's again, like you said, right? There's been a lot of discussion around this. It's very important to the project that we have space for that or get people who are dedicated to contributing in those areas um it's sort of a tragedy of the commons right if it doesn't happen <clears throat> what's like the i mean maybe you guys have a have a um bigger view on that but i've like the past couple of weeks has only been really us uh, discussing this stuff, right? Is there, are there any other um, members working on it, like on the back lines or somewhere? There are, I think, I think part of this is like people have just been out for vacation. Mm -hmm. um, like the last three weeks, right? We haven't had a meeting because people have just been out. So um, True, yeah. that's part of it, but. Yeah, Tim expressed a lot of support um, from the Sig Cluster life cycle perspective of doing anything that he can uh, to bolster the efforts in the area of component config specifically. Um, right. And that was Timothy St. Clair. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Timothy St. Clair. And then. Um, I mean, like nothing stops us, you know, from like doing a little bit of project management, identifying maybe some more approachable things and just pinging the mailing list. Usually when you send a message to the mailing list, like there are, you know, quite a few people that respond. Yeah, I think that's definitely something we could do more of. Um, even if we had like a weekly or bi-weekly, you know, announcement email, What's gotten done? Where does where is help needed? Yeah, I mean, we'll yeah. have the Sig Cluster lifecycle call after this, where we have our announcements um, for the people on that call. But the the mailing list is certainly a larger audience. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I remember sort of like the first time I really got started working on this was the contributor onboarding and there were a couple of points which were identified for like new contributors to work on um would it make sense to like i don't know make issues out of them describe them and then maybe use those links on the mailing list and say hey look we have some work to do if you guys would like to join um reach out to us or something like that so yeah, that was like hmm? go ahead yeah, and this was like one of the problems I had when I was trying to get started with Kubernetes. Um, just like identifying issues which, you know, I can work on and kind of like matches my skill set or, you know, I can tackle as a like starting contributor. Um, a lot of the issues to see on, on like, I don't know, in general, like in Kubernetes, Kubernetes or in, in the SIGs. You know, they love people talking on it. It's like, yeah, I'm tackling that immediately. And it's a bit like difficult. Okay, like how, what are like areas where I can actually, you know, chime in and work on stuff. So that was a bit difficult for me. And I had to navigate like these six, uh, six a little bit uh, but until I reached, I reached here basically. 
Do you think it would help if we like put together an email, like you said, with those items and then said, you know, for each of these, like we have a dedicated person who's willing to mentor new contributors like through the process of working on this thing. And we actually, you know, I'll do the component config stuff. Like we, you know, you can help with the serializer stuff maybe and we'll, we'll just kind of all split it up based on our domain knowledge and then maybe that makes it more attractive because there's mentorship available if people yeah. I, I think I think it does. I mean like um if if Lee wouldn't have um like taken the time to mentor me in this regard, I don't think I would like still spend time on this issue just because it's so daunting, you know. Mm -hmm. So like, there's no way for me to to tackle this as an outsider with no inside knowledge. I mean um you know, of course, I can read a book on API machinery or something, but you know, I I was still wouldn't know all the backstory of it and how these things interact. It's just so much better if someone talks it through with you just for like an hour or so. Um, yeah, it was so much better. It's it helped a lot. Okay, that's a good idea. I think let's let's put something like that together. I really like that idea. Yeah. Um, so that's part of the project management stuff. Is we should structure it so that it's clear mentorship is available for people, even if they, you know, log on from Thailand or uh, India in a completely different time zone and they don't know anybody. Yeah, and that can be. Like, our, oh, I can reach out to this person. Yeah, and that can be our value proposition. Like uh, it's something I was trying to think about was, you know, our working group is doing a lot of refactoring and like reorganization. It's a great way to learn about the code base. Um, it's not necessarily the sexiest work because it's not like a feature that you're gonna necessarily write a big blog post about, right? Um, but it's important to sort of the longevity of the project and like kind of the cleanliness of the system. Um, so I've been trying to think about, you know, what other things can we offer people? Um, it's maybe not like the glory of working on a feature, but it's still valuable to them. So I think that's a really good one. Um, yeah, mentorship, like opportunity to learn about the code and be more involved with the project, and we'll actually coach you through it. You know, yeah, yeah, and um, you know, having like a a single like landing page, you know, on maybe on the README of of the working group, and having a link to the project management page, and saying like, look, you know, these are the issues we're currently working on. If you're interested in any of those. Um, reach out to XYZ or something like that. So as a new contributor, um, like the fri friction to get started on these issues get reduced, gets reduced as much as possible, I think that's a good way. Something uh, something related to, uh, to that idea. So uh, uh, I've been trying to figure out uh, uh, how to work with legacy flags, uh, legacy flags and all that. And what, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the big resources that I had for trying to uh, Get an understanding of what uh, what I was supposed to uh, what I was supposed to do is actually a PR that was open as an example on KK, and that uh, and the and the thing that I was thinking is that that uh, PR that never uh, that never actually that, that never actually landed and just got closed was a really good and useful resource. Uh, and and nor, normally uh, normally things like that don't actually go into uh, don't actually go into documentation, again because it's not uh, it's not a feature it's not something that most people should be looking at. Is there uh, is there like a good place where we could put some more technical documentation of uh, uh, for uh, for some of the uh, for some of the work that we are doing here? That's a really good point, and I, I think we should definitely. There were some talks about having like an examples directory in component base, right, Lee? And I think a few of our libraries do that. Um, so maybe we should look at that more seriously and try to have, like you said, more real examples where you can just go read the code and see, oh, that's how this is supposed to be used. You know, because sometimes that, like you said, that can be hard to figure out from um, just like reading documentation. I think the real trouble as well is like it can be i guess a good significant burden for us to s propose a patch right that's making improvements uh, often incrementally to get to the end goal and to like already have that example beforehand mm -hmm. when 
people who have got who are going to go through months of review processes on that code are going to nitpick things and like ask for structure to change. Do you know what I'm saying? In terms of like writing an example of of something that's been proposed and then it's changing by the time it's actually in and the example not being up to date or like yes basically like i guess is the example is almost it like in that workflow it's a little bit of a cap right well, like the, design the, the, the specific one we're talking about but i think you could also have um you know, well, a lot, a lot of code is already merged, right? And there's a lot of things in use that are tough to understand. And like the serializer stuff is a great example of that, right? Um, and Alex, I don't know if you, if you had had more examples of how it was supposed to be used that were well documented. Do you think that would have helped? Um, do you mean if if I would have found something beforehand, like before working on these serializers, if that would have helped? No, more like would it would it have accelerated your understanding of that subsystem? Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, I feel there are like first of all, there's this whole like API machinery, which is you know a beast in itself to tackle. Like getting to know all the difference, like what's the scheme, what's um, was like internal version, external version, and that, that took me quite a while. And I think there are some. Um, some resources available for that. Uh, although it's not as, let's say, as I don't think it's, it's like the area is not as sexy as you said, as like, you know, networking or something. It are not like big fancy blog posts about it. No one's really writing about it. I mean, you have some talks of, you know, Stefan or, you know, there's this one book on, I think, Amazon they wrote, which I, which I am like currently reading as well. So like you, you can kind of like get at the information, but it's, it's really difficult um, because there's just not a lot of, you know, easy to understand beginner-friendly resources on on this. I feel. Um, so but I, to, answer, to, to, to answer your question, um, definitely. I mean, these these things always help. Um, if you have like a nice write-up on on this stuff. It's it's always good to have. Pretty cool. So I think that's something we can look at doing as well. Um, Maybe we can come up with kind of a framework for how to write that kind of documentation and write those examples and some guidelines and then kind of encourage people to do it. Um, maybe get some contributors who want to go learn about those subsystems and then improve that documentation. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah I'll just point out as well that um, kind of it might be also good to have a kind of like issue or example document like uh what alex uh did was um what am i saying um when when first attacking like multi-doc uh which then like went down into some deeper api machinery and serializer stuff uh, the first thing that you did was you started a document where you cataloged like English descriptions and links to version pieces of the code um, for all of the different components that were kind of within scope of what would work on that. And they all did things in a different way, right? And so that's like the, the problem is desiring and like wanting for refactoring. Um, and so the whole reason why there isn't like a central example or list of examples is because these projects have all done it a different way. Um, and you have to have somebody who's willing to then go like hunt for that genre of problem everywhere and then catalog and document, okay, like this is the state of things. And this is roughly how we can understand and talk about these things before you can identify patterns and then it's like, okay, well, like this is the pros and cons of this. This is the pros and cons of this. This is meant for this specifically. We should support this use case. We shouldn't do this. Um, that it's kind actually, of discussion yeah. like, is kind of the opposite of an example. Yeah, I think we, 
or at least it in some way needs to come before we recommend an example. I, like I, I would bet that there's like cases where we could have examples today where things are relatively stable, but those are also like the, the things that the working group is really trying to work on is what you just talked about, which is all these things that are messy. How do we unify them and simplify them, right? And so, you know, how do we build people up to where they are doing that work, going in, looking at all the different ways the projects have done it, and refining the solutions, and coming up with sort of the opinionated right way to do it for Kubernetes? I mean, um, this could be part of the of the work here. You know, I mean, like when we say, okay, we're we're gathering some. You know areas uh, maybe creating some issues pointing to mentors as uh, a mentors to them um, we could say you know look there's this one area why don't we or like this this person who knows the best of it why um, can't you try lo write down a little bit you know how does it work um, have some links to it um, for some people to understand what's the current state and then also discuss inside the working group where do we want to go from there um, have there be some PRs um, in that area, you know, put it in the dark um, and then iterate on that, you know, and you can have it in a Google Doc and when things change, just update it and uh, you link to it. And then people who are not familiar with the work can just look at it and say, ah, okay, this happened here, this happened there. This is what I thought of it. Um, I don't know, maybe, maybe that helps. And it definitely helps, yeah. Especially even if it's just shared with the mailing list, right? Just send an email out. I notice these things. Like it seems like there's some inconsistency, or we could improve this. You know, we don't need to gate having these discussions on someone writing a cap. Mm. Uh, we eventually may need caps to move on to implementing solutions to them, uh, but that should not block starting discussion. Cool. I think we've got some good ideas. I like. I definitely like sending out kind of an announcement, Lee, um, where we or kind of can organize the work that needs to get done, and say, "Hey, we need help with these. We're willing to mentor you if you're new to the project, or you'd like to contribute and get some coaching." I think that's a good first step for us. And then I like the the sort of improving the the example based documentation as well. We can figure out maybe there's some people who want to work on that. Another uh, another idea, uh, kind, of, uh, kind of more of a request that I, uh, that I wanted to throw out there, is that uh, every now and then I see uh, I see on PRs and issues that people ping the I forget the actual the, the exact name of the GitHub group, but it's something like component standard PR reviews or something. Mm. Uh, is there any chance that we could be added to those? Uh, I think uh, I think you know just being paying every time that um, uh, somebody's asking for a code review or asking for uh, or just com uh, commenting on an, uh, on an issue will also provide useful context for uh, for uh, for people who are not so familiar with everything that is going on under the component standard working group. Yeah, or, I think least, uh, or at least that's my uh, that's my case. I'm not really familiar with everything that's going on in the group. Yeah, I think we should we should consider adding like <laughs> regular contributors to that group so they get notified. Um, I'm not sure how to do that. I'm not very well versed in all the like extra GitHub features, but I'll see if we can figure it out. That's a really a good idea. Okay. Well, we have five more minutes of this meeting. Uh, I'm happy to work on the DX uh, of all of this and the contributor experience stuff awesome. after some whip. So right now I, I can't do this, but I'm, I'm happy to jump on and help out. Um, if anyone else wants to do project management stuff, ping me. <laughs> Yeah, we have um, yeah. also, Lee, we've got, I don't know if you were planning on going, but there's the community meeting on the 26th that we're scheduled for a SIG update. Um, so if we could put something together by then, even it doesn't have to be like totally well formed, it could just be a plan that we're thinking about, that might be good. So we can discuss it with the broader community. Okay, I'll put that on my list for next week. 
Uh, let's make sure we hit Alex's points here on um, multi-doc refactoring and the strict serializer. <clears throat> So just real quick, uh, yeah, last week, uh, Lee and I, we had some uh, like rather long session diving a little bit into the code. Um, we identified three different implementations in the code base, which handles um, multi-doc. So um, my plan is to just, you know, take them, see what their workflow is, and basically the ultimate goal is to find some sort of workflow or abstraction which we can add to the codec factory, ideally, you know, using one of the three, um, seeing what the work, what workflow is, what the limitations are on those, basically moving forward. Um, and then another thing, or is there any, any questions so far on, on that? That sounds like it makes sense. Okay. Um, the next one is, so the, the strict serializers um, have merged and I've like while looking through all the code, like where um where where like the codec factory is used in um the existing components, um Lee suggested that you know I make some patches on uh using the strict serializer on the component configs. Um so I just wanted to yeah, throw that into into the discussion if that is a good thing. Uh if I should work on this it should be fairly straightforward. You know, maybe like add a strict serializers, add some tests, and then I think so. to the yes, that that would be very useful. Um, I'm happy to help on the kubelet side too if you need code pointers there. So okay, sure. Then I'll I'll get going on that one. Something to be careful there is like looking at the kubelet scheme um, that you linked. Which, by the way, thank you for linking all of the places in the code. Uh, that is significant work. Um, the oh, that's the config scheme. Yeah, so just yeah. making sure, I guess, that that's not used uh, for the kubelet like parsing pods and stuff. No, no, that's, mm -hmm. that's all in core VM. Okay. Yeah. 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 I'll I'll check it out. Yeah. We need cool. To yeah, that's. Uh, I think we, we just import the same scheme as the API server and use that. OK. Um, hmm. Yeah. Cool. Um, all right. Well, thanks so much, folks. We're kind of out of time here. Um, but that was a good meeting. I think we got some really good action items uh, for the working group. So thanks for all of your input. And see you all next week. Cool. See you next Thanks week. Bye-bye.